when you saw me coming in with a banner, what did you think? Probably that I am an activist. I manifest was important for me. Maybe some of you thought, oh great, another activist which won't make any difference. Well, yes, I am an activist. I belong to a movement called Youth Climate Strike, which is a part of global movement, Fridays for Future. We protest, we strike, and we manifest. We manifest our anger caused by politicians who don't listen to us, yet we still shout to make our voices heard. That's because we're in the middle of the sixth mass extinction. Ice caps are melting, and our actions still don't match the severity of the crisis. But that's not the reason I came here today. I came here because I want to emphasize that even though we talk about climate practically every single day, we almost never talk about ourselves. That's because climate is the most important thing for us environmentalists right now. We are too focused on our, go on our goal to talk about how we really feel and what bothers us. When you see a smiling teenager with a banner, just like you saw me a few minutes ago, you see an activist. You don't see them for the person that they are. A person who freaks out every single day thinking about climate crisis. A person who can't listen to the words of politicians anymore because they are so sick of them. A person, a person who experiences verbal and even physical violence regularly. That's who we happen to be. Well, that's your choice, one might say. Of course, we could have chosen to ignore the facts about the impending climate change, live our lives and, well, wait for our death to come. But instead, we decided to fight. Although I think that most of us weren't prepared for all the things we experience. So why did we take action? We took action because we want the best future possible, not only for us, but for you. Every single person sitting in this audience right now. We want the best future possible for all of the people living on this planet and plants and animals. But still, a lot of people ignore us, cut call us, even deny climate crisis. When I studied uh, the topic to depth, I prepared an anonymous, an anonymous questionnaire and posted it on uh, Extinction Rebellion and Youth Climate Strike, countrywide groups on Facebook. About 50 people responded. And in the question, how often do you feel like your actions don't bring any result? Almost 50% responded that they feel that often or very often. Feeling powerless and frightened because of the future that we people prepared for ourselves is a common thing among activists. I participated in an activism workshop once. We were talking about how we feel, both about hate that people give us and the knowledge that if nothing changes, in about seven years, we will accurately feel the consequences of climate change. At one point, one of our activists, let's call him Jay, left the room. We thought that he had something that needed to be taken care of because he was one of the main organizers of the event. So you can understand my concern when a few weeks later, um, in one of our meetings, Jay told us what happened that day. Talking about how powerless we feel and how politicians ignore us was simply too much for him at some point. He couldn't bear it. So he left the room, sat on a curb, and started crying. He wasn't able to calm himself for quite a while. The term climate depression is becoming more and more relevant. A lot of people around the world feel what Jay and many other activists felt. Even if you're not an activist or an environmentalist yourself, you may have heard that Greta Thunberg has, has suffered from what we call climate depression. Yes, the powerful Swedish teenager 
who started a global movement. When she first began to read about climate change, she couldn't believe it, because how could that be possible? We're in the middle of the sixth mass extinction. There are and will be many more forest fires, droughts, floods, weather anomalies. And yet, carbon dioxide pollution is still on the rise. As she read more and more about it, she fell into depression. She didn't talk, she didn't eat, and lost 10 kilos as a result. She didn't attend school for almost a year because of her disease. But at some point, she realized that the only reasonable solution was to take action. That's when she started to school strike for climate. But it's not that easy to just grab your banner, go and manifest. Especially when you experience verbal or physical violence. Probably many of you heard about what happened in Białystok on one of president, presidential candidates' election rallies. Youth climate activists were being pushed, people spat on them, trampled their banners. But the worst thing that happened was that one male, one man, pulled up a shirt of our female activists revealing her naked chest and said, you could as well not be wearing this shirt. It was a very shocking situation for our movement. We were called many names before, people were shouting things and so on. But we would never think that someone was actually going to sexually harass a person. So now that you have all that information, you might be wondering what it has to do with you. What can you do? Well, the least you can do is to respect us. Respect our right to strike and protest. And the next very important thing is to listen to us. Because when 4 million people take to the streets, as they did in September last year, it means that they have something very important to tell you. If your friend is an activist, support them. You can ask them if they're okay, remind them uh, to stay safe while protesting, or simply let them know that you are there for them. And if you are an activist, or willing to be one, remember, activism isn't easy. But I think that changing the world for better is so worth it. Thank you.